Hi everybody, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. This is episode 110 of our Knitting and Crochet podcast and you're watching this, if you're watching on the day that it's published, December 9th, 2022. We're recording in the yarn shop in our woolen mill on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island and welcome to everybody. If you're a previously viewed us before, we have a full episode for you this time. If you're new to the podcast, this is a podcast where we talk about our knitting, our crochet, our animals on the farm, and whatever else comes to mind. So welcome, if this is your first time. So today, we're going to start with the farm update as usual. There's no news to talk about any of the animals. Everybody's doing just great. Uh, we continue with our crazy weather around here. So uh, this week, we had a little bit of excitement in the wood tent. So for those of you that might be new, we're calling our house the wood tent because we're doing a full renovation back to the boards. Um, it's not so much a tent anymore because we actually have the insulation in and the furnace got hooked up and um, we're moving along now, you know, getting ready to do the gyp rock and everything in the side of the house that we're renovating. But we had this major rainstorm the other night and literally the rain was horizontal and uh, in one section of the house where we didn't have the, uh, we haven't started the gyp rock yet, um, rain actually came in the house. So we felt pretty lucky that we didn't have the gyp rock up because uh, we would have never known that, the, that it was uh, going to get wet. So um, our David, our construction guy, got up on the, on the roof. We have flat roofs over some of the bay windows in the house and um, they're creating a little bit of a problem. So he had to get up on the roof and uh, try to fix that. But we were really, really thankful that we hadn't closed things up yet. So, uh, you know, everything, we were just complaining a little tiny bit that it was taking a long time. Some of the trades are really busy still wrapping up things from Fiona. And we were complaining just a little bit that things weren't moving as fast as we wanted. But in that case, it was a lucky, uh, a lucky thing that we still had the walls all open because David was able to fix where the leak was coming in. It kind of is like uh, we've never had water there before. And um, we had that roof fixed a couple of years ago and it was completely, uh, it was completely dry in the place where there, there was, it was leaking during the rainstorm. So we feel like we're pretty lucky that we had everything open so that we could see that. And the wind and rain was coming from a completely different direction uh, than what it normally does. So luckily we caught it before everything was closed up. As far as animals goes, there's just one thing that I discovered today. So this is about the horses this time. So uh, we have two horses here on the farm, Miles and Purdy, and uh, they're pretty chill because they live in a big, huge field and uh, they know everything that's going on around there. But if there's an animal around in the hedgerows, like a fox or something like that, they will alert. So Purdy actually lost her eye a number of years ago and has one eye, but she can see more with her one eye than Miles is oblivious to everything that's going on. He relies on her to sound the alarm if there's anything. And this morning I was just hanging out in the field a little bit and uh, rearranging their hay to make sure they had access to, uh, to all their hay. They, ha they eat out of a hay net but they've eaten a hole in the hay net so they tend to hollow out the middle of the of the big round bale that we feed them so every morning i kind of rearrange the hay a little bit and while i was doing that purdy went into high alert mode and she put her neck she's quite tall so she put her neck to its full height and was watching intently um, towards where the mill is and i thought what are they looking at and uh, i couldn't see anything in the hedgerow so I couldn't, I, and there was no, like, I didn't think that there was anybody around or anything, but actually what happened was the guy that's working on our house had walked up towards the mill and, um, they must've seen him around already before, but I thought it was really interesting that they understood that there was somebody strange, somebody they didn't know 
really uh, that well on the property. And I can tell you that they're as good as watchdogs because they were really like staring at him until he got close enough. And once he got close enough and then I said hello to him, then they relaxed. So it's really, it was really something about how, uh, how that happened and uh, how good they are at really being aware of everything in their surroundings and that they knew that there was somebody that they didn't really know was on the property. So I thought that that was kind of reassuring in a way. And I pay attention when uh, when they do look and stare at, at some, like they'll, they'll hear a noise or they'll see something out of the corner of their eye and then they have like a laser focus. And uh, this morning I thought it was nothing, but uh, it turns out that it was somebody that they didn't know as well as us that was on the property. So they're, they're watch, watch horses, <laughs> like watchdogs. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Not even that, not much what is going on. Ken got the Christmas lights up on the, on the house. And uh, so that makes it look cheery. We have a big wreath and uh, Christmas lights and we go old school, old fashioned, multicolor lights on our house and uh, not too many, just a little bit. And uh, it looks really, it kind of sets the tone. Um, we're well into December and uh, Christmas is coming, obviously. So I guess that's it. So we're going to go um, to this is normally when we would talk about my works in progress or our finished objects and uh, we're not going to talk about that today because first of all there's no finished objects and second of all I don't have any works in progress to show. I still have been working on my projects but um, there's nothing finished. So what I'm going to do instead is something a little bit special. The campaign for wool in Canada produced four little um, vignettes about wool in Canada and uh, I have permission to show them. So I think I'm going to show them over the next four podcasts. And uh, the first one that I'm going to show is about a knitting group that's in Newfoundland that's been knitting for a long, long time. And it's just a lovely group of I think they're all women, but uh, there could be men in the group, but I think they're all women. And they've been knitting for really, really a long time and they're doing a feature on uh, on these knitters. So I think I'm going to show that. It's a few minutes long and uh, we'll sit back and, and learn a little bit about uh, some of the things that you may not know about uh, knitting in Canada. So we'll hop on over to Newfoundland. <music> I have lived in Bristol Tub for 72 years. In the mornings I'm usually in the kitchen and I'm knitting. But I always have something on needles. I've been knitting over 70 years. I'd say over 80 really, because I was only very, very small when I started to knit. I can remember first knitting little things from the dolls. My name is Yvonne Shepherd, and I'm 88 years old and I started knitting when I was six or seven years old. Well, I came here to start teaching school when I was only a teenager. And I taught school in a little one-room school up the road. You know, I didn't have to ask my parents for anything. I just, I lived on what I made, $50 a month. We met and started dating. Tall, dark and handsome. When you got married, you stayed home and raised your family. There's no daycares then. Had seven children, four boys and three girls. One morning got up ready to go to work, put on his coveralls and just dropped them on the floor. Had a massive heart attack. 56 years old. He was the only one with bringing in an income, so I had to do something. You just gotta go on and do the best you can, haven't you? I saw a little ad in the paper that they were looking for knitters and you had to send in a sample of your work. So I sent in a sample of my knitting and they sent it back with a big box of wool and a pattern and telling me what they wanted knit and I've been knitting for them ever since. So it really helped me get through a, t a difficult time in my life. 33 years I've been knitting for Nonia. Nonia is a not-for-profit which was established over a hundred years ago, Newfoundland Outport Nursing and Industrial Association. 
Here in St. John's we put together orders for the knitters, wool and patterns uh, that we want them to knit and we send it to them wherever they are in the province. They knit the goods at home, package them up and mail them back to us. When the government took over health care, Nonia continued as an industrial operation and the money was then uh, in really important household income for the women. Uh, one woman joked about having uh, knit her stove because she was able to buy a stove with the money she earned knitting for Nonia. Wool is very warm. It's naturally wind and water resistant. If you take care of a sweater, it will last you the rest of your life. And when it's reached the end of its useful life, it's biodegradable. Well, it's durable and it's soft and nice to wear. I would sooner work with the wool than with cotton or anything else. That's something I like about it. Oh, it's wonderful. I gave him a brief introduction to Nonia and then he started asking the knitters about what they were what they were knitting, how long they'd been knitting. He was charming and very polite, I found, and he just looked at it and sort of sized it up and he said, a lot of work went into that. I said, yes, a lot of work with that went into that. He said, you do a lot of knitting. I said, if I'm sitting down, I'm knitting. So he thought that was funny. <laughs> I have 14 children all together, seven from my first marriage and seven stepchildren. So Mother's Day is a busy day because they all contact me on Mother's Day. The children were all grown and everyone had all the knitted stuff they wanted, so knitting for Noni worked out wonderful for me. And I still enjoy my knitting. hope you enjoyed that it's amazing um, we're going to do a shop update later but I may as well say right now is that um, obviously you know that we're very fond of Newfoundland we talk about the saltwater mittens and those books quite a lot and you know that we had um, Shirley Scott and Christine Legro here in the shop uh, when the festival fiber festival was supposed to be on uh, I'm really happy to say that their latest book, Saltwater Socks, has uh, actually had to go into its second printing already. And we were out of stock for a couple days, but uh, we do have the... Uh, we do have the saltwater sock book uh, um, back in stock. Uh, we don't have signed copies anymore because they, they sold out uh, about two weeks ago. But we do are back in stock of, uh, of the books. So if you're still looking for saltwater socks and try, having a hard time to find it, um, we have that. So that would be your little piece of Newfoundland that you can, uh, you can have at home or nice to be asked for for under the tree. So uh, um, we do have those back in stock. So I'm going to go over to the section with Betsy now and Betsy and I are going to talk about um, our wallflowers of course but we uh, are going to do, I didn't do a recap of the Arnon Carlos event because uh, Betsy and I talk about it. So Betsy was there um, and Jennifer Hicks for the, for the three days that we were with Arnon Carlos and um, Betsy has actually even done a little slideshow about some of the things that were going on so we're going to talk about all of that in the the section with Betsy um, then we're going to uh, she's going to show her knitting projects that she's been working on and I will uh, show what I've got done on wallflowers and Betsy's almost finished her wallflower blank blanket it's amazing so you're going to want to see that so let's go over to the segment uh, with Betsy hi Betsy hi Kim hi how are you <laughs> really excited are you I still am buzzing oh okay I'm tired <laughs> oh, well there's that too but isn't the it just... adrenaline is starting to wear off yeah, a little bit down. so for what what are we talking about what are we talking about Arna and Carlos yay the event was fun what yeah. a blast so good and uh, we don't really want to create FOMO mm. fear of missing out True. but it's not fear of missing out you've missed out now <laughs> So, so <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, but we hope that you're going to love living vicariously through the four wonderful days that we had. Yes. Yeah, three wonderful. Three. Three, yeah, yeah well, and then there was the times on the end of the, of on the official times. Yeah. So what do we want to say about it? It was really good. So yeah. I've never been to any kind of like knit event, including a knit night 
never even made it to a knit night. We have to remember, I started knitting during COVID. Right. And we're just starting to get things up and going. We've had a few bumps along the way. So it, for me, was like super amazing and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Knitters are a great bunch. They really are. Just yes. like, I have, by the way, for all of you viewing as well, never had so many compliments on a haircut in my oh. life. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that was good. That Everybody was fun. like, yeah, they did. That's liked my, and then in person as well. It was so great to meet some of you. Mm -hmm. um, it was really amazing to meet Arna and Carlos. Yes. So I did have to like, after I went home, my husband said to me, Betsy, do you realize what? Like, do you realize? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, okay, let's start here. He's like, you work at Fleece and Harmony. You met Andrea and Madeline yeah. in October over Thanksgiving. Yeah. And now you just met Arna and Carlos. He's like, where do you go from here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it was uh, um, it was pretty spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a little bit of a, a little bit of a, well, I had a little bit of a, of a nervous breakdown almost. I was going to call it a kerfuffle. A kerfuffle. Okay, yeah. Nervous breakdown. So no, it wasn't really a nervous breakdown, but. You know, then my automatic, this is an emergency kind of mindset comes in, which hap what happens to me if there's an like some kind of something doesn't go exactly right, including like in the barn, but in life in general, I just go, I slow down. Yeah. Okay, take a breath. This is going to be okay. And what happened was, Arna and Carlos were supposed to be traveling with someone from Rowan that was looking after all of their things. And um, Ken and I, on the Sunday before they were coming, Ken and I were out, we were relaxed, and we're having a nice dinner, and we came home, and then I looked at my phone, and there was an email, three emails from Arna and Carlos, and one email from the person from Rowan, and I was like, oh boy, what's going on? So lesson number on? one, don't look at your phone on Sunday evening. <laughs> when you're supposed to be off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I looked at my phone and the person from Rowan was actually ill. So she wasn't going to be able to come. And she just had a, she just had a cold, but she had a bad cold. And yeah. she said, I'm not interested. She caught it over the Thanksgiving weekend, right. I guess, or whatever, with the festivities and family and everything. And she said, um, I don't even, she says, it's just a cold, but I don't want to give that to anybody either. Well, and so, we were which all going like, to be hanging out in the same room. Yeah, yeah so exactly. that was kind of So that was, that was yeah. good. But she was, had all the details for the travel itinerary for Arna and Carlos. And she was looking after everything to the point that Arna and Carlos didn't even know the name of the hotel that they were supposed to <laughs> stay in. And they were coming in like quite late at night, like uh, 12, 25 yeah. or something like that. With the, so late. in the morning, like early in the yeah. morning. And um, so that was a little bit uh, like the materials for the classes were with her and she had to FedEx them on Monday morning and hope that they got here and they uh, they had a whole trunk show that they were bringing and she had all of those samples yeah. that didn't make it no at least we had Carlos had one with him that he was able to show us yes he was wearing um, and then Arna I think travels with just knitwear all the time yes yes so they did yeah. uh, and that in the stuff that uh, that um, Rowan was supplying was like just their Rowan stuff but they had they had stuff of their own yes. too, so that yeah. was good. So that was a little bit of a panic because now I went from don't worry about anything, I'll look after it, to now you need to worry about all of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but can I make a confession? What? I think it worked out okay for me. Yeah, yeah, because I needed help with everything. I think yeah. I got to just experience a little more up close and personal than yeah. I would have had they had their representative as well as you. Yeah, um, they would have yeah. been. And I have to say that we held the event at the Holman Grand Hotel and they were just wonderful. They like, were I mean, I really, phenomenal. I really didn't need to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Like they were, once they got there, you know, they found, Arna and Carlos had the name of the hotel that they yes. were staying yes. at. Yes. And uh, the name that they were actually checked in under because that was not even, I didn't even know that. I was right. just like, don't worry, they, they know who you are. They know who you are. And I, then I was like, oh, Luke, <laughs> <laughs> whose name is that? Yes. So anyway, it, it all worked out. All of their luggage arrived. They mm -hmm. were worried because they had all their stuff for their, yeah. their stuff for the classes in their luggage. Of course. And we started off with the Sit and Knit a Bit Live, which yes. was a lecture. Mm -hmm 
on the night before the classes started. Yeah. And there was 100 people there. Yeah. And it was really, really great. It really was. It was fun to yeah. just kind of hear their story, their design story, their how they got yes. where they are today. And yeah. just, yeah, it was neat. Because yeah. it was a little bit of like personal story as well as um, career story combined with yeah. creative story. How so they was, bought their house yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, we so won't it give was, it all away. No, no, we're not going to go hear it. Away. <laughs> yeah, but it was, um, and I was, uh, I was surprised. Although I don't know why I should have been like, because they're they're really real on yes. their on their podcast or on their YouTube channel. They were exactly like they are. That's that's yeah. I think that's important. And I even said that to some people I met. Mm. That kind of my biggest hope is when you meet people in person that you represent the same. Yeah, right. They're, and they, they were exactly. Did. Yeah, they were exactly like they are. Yeah. So uh, which is great. Yes. Yeah. So the, that was the first night. Then uh, that went on till nine o'clock, but they hadn't eaten dinner. So we oh, had yeah. to try to find a place in Charlottetown that was still serving dinner after nine o'clock at night, which is not easy in, in the, the middle off of winter. Season. In the yeah. off season. Yes. So uh, again, Luke at the hotel came to the rescue, yeah. found us a place. I'm not sure how happy they were to see us <laughs> at 10 after nine, but anyway. That's all that right. was They good. did it fine. Was good. They got us food. They got us fed and we got yeah, out of there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. So it was great. And then, um, then we went back to the room. I stayed in the hotel yeah. that, because um, it's, I wasn't going to go 35 minutes no. every day back and forth. And uh, so I just gave well, myself a break. And your day was starting pretty early too. Yeah. So, so I gave myself yeah. a break because... Uh, we we went for breakfast with them. Yeah. We then you had to like arrange everything. And anyway, it was really it was really really great. And the classes started. Everybody yeah. was really excited to be there. And I was really surprised at the kind of um, accessibility people had in the class. I thought I pictured them standing at the front of the class instructing right. from a distance but they didn't they spent time with every single person in the class absolutely they made their way all the way around yeah and we're very open to questions and just even like you know straight, help me Arna help me yeah <laughs> and they yeah. show up help Carlos and they'd be just a minute help me right over and yeah. like one-on-one -on -one coaching and yeah yeah so it was really neat to really, see really yeah yeah so they they just grabbed two chairs yep. and they put the chairs in the middle it was shaped as a U and yes. they put the chair in the middle and then they moved the chair down the line <laughs> and everybody got FaceTime with Arna and Carlos yeah. individually like it was really really great I I was um I thought if I was a knitter that that would be that was something that would have surprised me they weren't just like lec lecturing at the front okay. of the class and they I were. think an appreciation that I had then is I understood why they keep their classes to a certain size yes. and why they limit their ticket sales because if they sold 75 100 yes, tickets would per class able. that would not have been possible yeah um, so I'm sorry if you missed out and didn't get the ticket you wanted, but I now understand why they That's do right. that. That's right, yeah. yeah. And they, um, I didn't put the limit on the classes. No. They had a strict limit. Yeah. The, that was a strict limit. So, and it made uh, sense. And now yeah. it made sense. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I would find more people. Like, you know, but they they had a strict limit, yeah. and and now I understand why. Yeah. yeah. So in future, if they're running another event that you can get to, and you can get a ticket, you'll understand kind of how you're going to see the personal yeah the personal <laughs> instruction you're going to get yeah. from Arna and Carlos so yeah. um so that was great yeah. and every class was fantastic yeah. so um, and three hours long mm -hmm. right so it's not like they're even just you know dropping in for 45 minutes like you have them for a whole morning or a whole afternoon yeah and there was even time that I think they'd given enough instruction that you could see them kind of just milling about so mm -hmm. it wasn't like people were in a panic the whole time to try to get their their help they were right. able to have enough time to help as well as do some mingling and, yes. and chatting too and then once everybody in the class was sorted out and knew what they were doing and obviously you just had to knit or crochet <laughs> like to you had to get to the next step yeah. somehow and uh, then they they filled that space in with other little stories like for example yeah. they showed uh they were in the museum in selbu yeah. and they actually had a pair of selbu gloves there and I'm going to talk about uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this a little bit more in the shop update right. 
But um, since I put the opening for the Selvu mittens, I had the chance to show them the Wild Winds yarn. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I picked their brains about how, how does it compare, because they, they're familiar with that, yeah. that yarn. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the shop update. Um, but uh, just suffice it to say, I was pretty chuffed. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, I, because I didn't know, like I read the book and I tried to discern like what kind of yarn would it be and you know how, how I was relying on the author of the book to describe the type of yarn that they would have used and um, I, I was, I was able she to She did really it. good. Yeah, she, <laughs> I was able to, it passed the test. Yes. It passed the, the official Norwegian test. Yes. yes. So that was That's good. pretty neat. Yeah, so that was yeah. pretty neat. So I don't know what else could we say. It was just good. Yeah. They were, right. yeah, they were, I mean, it was a long haul for them. We were the last, yes. uh, they did four um, events all together, and we were the last, uh, the last right. one. But you couldn't tell that we were the last. Like, no. they were really attentive yeah. and, and enthusiastic. Absolutely. and. They ate lots of seafood. Yes, they wanted which to is get what they were after. Yeah, yeah they, they were, were after seafood. So yeah. they they uh, they ate lots of seafood, and um, the, all of the service that we got, like from the hotel and the restaurants and everything, was really, really good. Really, really yeah. good. So it was. I found uh, a restaurant or two that I intend to go back to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was really, uh, really nice. So, all in then all, they want. They oh. said they wanted to come back. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know right, if we were right going like, to confess that. Well, they said it right in the class. They did. So I, who knows when that will be. But the these folks, I think, are booked up. Like, yeah. like they talk a year or two ahead. Yeah, um, exactly. Because that's just how their life rolls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think that um, it kind of showed that you could host something like that. So, I mean, I was pretty... I, I didn't think that I was ever going to do another event ever between the yeah <laughs> the thing I was like okay this is it this is it for me doing events but I think we could actually have more events like I, that I think we and could. invite other people yeah. like it doesn't always have to be somebody so. from Rowan I mean no, it could exactly. be uh, other yeah. designers or instructors or whatever so and I think the now key, I'm thinking, one of the keys they taught us is I mean these folks are well known we can't deny that and yeah. yet. We were able to do it in a smaller hotel and keep the event a little bit smaller. Yeah. And they gave some really good valid reasons for that. And just watching it unfold showed us mm -hmm. how that that's okay to not be too big. Yeah. So that was neat to yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't work with 250 people no. or something like no. that. So anyway, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. For Dream yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll I'm, have my thinking cap on for some other ideas. So, nice. uh, so we'll see what happens. Exactly. So I think that, so that was the big thing. So, and for, I want to say right here, because um, by the time this is airing, I think we should be through the backlog, but we do have a little bit of a backlog in the orders. Yeah. Um, people, I had my Rowan basically the biggest part of my Rowan shop was there at the at right. the hotel so we uh, we had people shopping there um, we had orders coming in and we're just a little bit behind so um, I'll just reiterate because when people order I want you to be aware we give ourselves a two-week shipping window when it, you order some of our own yarn that uh, we have to make so that means that when you order, if we have to dye your yarn to order, it will take us two weeks to ship it out sometimes, yes. if depending on how long the dye queue is. We just caught up on the dye queue, I would say. So we're, yeah. we're back to normal things, but um, just a lot of, uh, we have a lot to be grateful for in yes. the shop because uh, we were featured on Fruity Knitting. Oh my goodness. The grocery girls randomly <laughs> bought yarn from us and showed it on their podcast. Yeah. We had the yarn on Carlo's event um, and it's been a bit crazy. Yeah. So, but crazy good. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, everybody yes, that ordered. Thank you but so much. I'm just, uh, just be aware we have all of your orders. We're shipping them out as quickly as you're yeah. possible. We're, by the time you're looking at this, we're caught up. So yeah. things will be back to normal. 
Um, we did have a few little issues of things that we don't make here that sold out and um, we were we were already behind orders were coming in online and we had already we were selling out as well so I had to order a couple things in but they're all all the things are available they're coming everything's in transit <laughs> everything's in transit so yeah. uh, we're just trust that we're getting um, your things out as quickly as possible yeah so I think now we're going to talk about what our projects are. We're going to talk about us. You're going to talk about <laughs> us, us and our... I think we're supposed to share what we're wearing. Oh, we yes. Get, we get dinged for that one. Yes. So, so I'm wearing rain yep. to celebrate our Nan Carlos. So uh, this is one of the designs from the new Nordic unisex books that, uh, or book that was done. Um, so that uh, that's what I'm wearing. It's yeah. made it, uh, knit in uh, alpaca classic. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's so. it's really light. Like anytime yes. I, I I sometimes hang it up and down for show in the shop, and I can't yeah. believe how like weightless it yes. is. Yes, it really is like very, a cloud. Yeah, it is very uh, yeah. light. It's very comfortable to wear alpaca yeah. classic, and it's uh, it's thickish. But the no, yarn yeah. is really thin, but it fluffs up a bit because you've got all this uh, little bit of fuzz uh, here. But it's um, very comfortable to wear. Nice. It's not like too That's hot. Good. I'm wearing a sweater out of our Selkirk worsted, and I'm a little on the warm side. Yeah, it's Being warm. inside, it's a bit mild out there again. Our temperatures are going... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's above um, freezing. And we've again. got lights, so it's not yeah. super ideal for like under lights heat but yeah. it's also cozy um so i'm wearing for fox sake yeah um by max sear and it's out of our selkirk worsted yeah um we've got i've got northumberland blue blue lobster atlantic sky and pumpkin patch and right. crow wing in around it. the glasses yeah and somebody i somebody else was talking about in the sweater and says that the sweater with the bad name <laughs> Fox, yes. F-O-X. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little play on the, words, the yes, little we fox. know, but I, yes. was, I forget who else was talking about that I sweater, know, but anyway. But I'm sure. The yeah. sweater with the bad, I'm wearing the bad sweater. The bad sweater, <laughs> the sweater with the bad name. Yes. Anyway, it's all just a yeah. play Lots on of words. Fun. Yes. Okay, so let's start talking about our knitting. Sounds good. All right. Um, so I'll start from sort of the least involved and okay. move on from there. So all this right. is, I'm calling it cake. Mm -hmm. It's a wrap that I'm making out of our uh, Ferris wheel. That's point this one sock here. yarn. Yep, point yep. from sock yarn, Ferris wheel, and then the blue is cotton candy. Right. Um, and I was wearing a pre-made, like a, a shop wrap on the weekend and had it wrapped around. And I realized I really just need to hold this up to it or measure it and then measure this because I right. think it's going to be time to stop soon. <laughs> oh, okay. And how much yarn have you gone through so, so far? I purchased five skeins of sock that's yarn. Yeah. That's a lot, especially since I'm doing it on five millimeter needles. Right. So there's lots of drape, lots of air. Yeah. So the sock yarn is a fingering waist. It's yes. 400 yards for 104 Grams. Grams. So 500 yards, five skeins, yeah. 2,500. That's a lot. Too much. Yeah. So I'm into um, the second one of the blue. Oh, and it's only two. Oh, I yeah. know. I'm okay. Only, All right. I'm only the second of the blue, and I'm only like partway through the first one oh, of okay. the Ferris wheel. Okay. So there's, I don't think I'll even be starting the other two. Um, at yeah. Because this is getting long. Yeah. I do okay. want it to kind of, I have an ideal. I want it to come up and around and down. Right. That's the, the goal. So right. if it does that, it's not quite that long yet. No, not quite. No. And mm -hmm. I am knitting it as a diagonal construction. So yeah. it's you can kind of tell. So we people are yeah. gonna ask yeah. what is the pattern? You're <laughs> so you have garter oh, the, stitch on the diagonal. Yep. Yeah. And then on the cotton candy is seed, seed stitch. stitch. Yeah. Single seed stitch. Yeah. Because so. the goal was to make it as reversible as possible. So yeah. the only thing that says it's the backside is when you change colors, you get that little dash mark across. Right. And if anyone knows how to do that and eliminate that knitting in the with flat garter. with garter yeah. and with seed stitch, I'll let take us know. The advice. Yeah. yeah, let us know. <laughs> um, and then, what is the? How do you get the? How do you get the design? Like it started from a corner. It starts from a corner, and so. All you do because is... Because Betsy is not going to write the pattern. No, I'm not. <laughs> because this is just a, a thing that she's just made. I actually had an epiphany about that. Okay. So having chatted with Arna and Carlos and listening to their design journey, being a designer is something that I think 
this is my view of it anyway that I've embraced. It it's okay and it requires some education. It requires yeah. some learning. You have yeah. to do some learning. Whether you do that in a formal educated way or you do it on your own, right. it takes some learning. So being a designer is not the same thing as being a creator. That's right. And I have figured out I am a creator. I just want to make things. I don't want to necessarily put them in, in a design and right. sell them. A design right. needs to have thought, mathematics, an understanding of how it will work for everyone. Yeah, and like, other yeah. than, I mean, wraps, but also how it's going to live in 3D exactly. as well. Yeah. And we had lots of discuss interesting discussions about that, and yeah. that a designer and a knitter, a really good knitter, are not the not same thing. Not the same thing. And then <laughs> I added to that, I'm like, and then there's like, a creator so yeah. I just like to make things but I don't necessarily ever want to make that same thing over again right. so I apologize for those of you who may want to make what I make but maybe someday we can get together and I can talk about what being a creator is yeah. and how that process works yeah. so in the having said that, yeah, all that there sorry. won't be there won't be a written pattern <laughs> no. but this is just I'm just interested in what the mechanics are of how this. it works yeah so on the right side the right side you have to pick one for this. You increase at the one end, right? And you decrease at the other okay. end. Okay. So as you go across on the right side, you're always decreasing and then I mean sorry, increasing when you start, decreasing when you end. Okay. Flip over to the back side and you just knit all the way across. Okay. Then you flip back again, you're going to increase at your start and you're going to decrease at the end. Okay, so but you start it with a point. You start with a little tiny point. So you, yep. how did you get to the width? You're increasing on both sides. Oh, right. I forgot about that one. Yes, thank See, you. That's Sorry. why. <laughs> See, this is why I'm not a designer because I don't even remember all this. Yeah. Yes, until you reach. So yeah, you're increasing on both sides. Right. Both the front side and the back side. Okay. And then um, so two stitches on both each side. <laughs> this is going to get complicated. Yeah. Anyway, don't. This we're not trying yeah. to give you the pattern. No. It's just more of the mechanics of, of it. Works. Yeah. So you start with the point. You increase on both sides until it's as wide as you want. Right. And then then you switch to the increase decrease to increase, keep it decrease. steady the whole yes. way. And then you're going to get these diagonal. It looks diagonal. Yeah. And you know, if you really want to know. Just tutorial or t tutorial. Just search for a tutorial on YouTube that says diagonal construction. And oh yeah, be the okay. other several. Is that what you did? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I'm not going to claim that I've made up anything. No. Okay. No. But that's I just it. put that's pieces just, together. Right. This is the whole course on the being a creator. That's right. <laughs> and then you're just randomly changing the yarn when whenever. I feel like it. Yeah. And well, when I feel like it, and the goal is to have the majority of blue. So this yeah. is the largest chunk of the ferris wheel that right. i will do it's about six inches wide and i just know i don't want too much of that because i still want the wrap to read blue when right. you look at it right yeah. so and it's just free and easy you're yeah. just doing so. you're just knitting the way knitting, that you knitting, want knitting. yeah yep. okay so that's so this cake. Is excellent tv knitting okay yeah to go with my ice cream hoodie yeah um and then the other one oh i showed you guys this last week i haven't done a whole lot on the actual mittens but for those who may have missed it my husband is volunteering. We have the uh, Canada Games here happening in 2023 mm -hmm. over March, February and March. Um, and he's volunteering and he wanted mittens made for it. So he created this knit chart on my iPad using right. Procreate and a grid pattern. Right. And wants this on mittens. So I'm doing this in our, again, our Selkirk Worsted in A Night Without Stars sprout and a little bit of natural right is in there as well and i'm doing it on dpns right yeah okay which i'm loving and he wanted the so for people that yeah. think the cuff looks uh tight he wanted he it wanted to be it tight, tight yeah to keep him more i guess he's going to be outside he a wants lot. it to be underneath his jacket right and so he wants okay. that to stay yeah. in place excellent yeah and i'm and doing i'm using the saltwater ladies mittens book as a guide just how to create the thumb gusset and okay. a, a mitten shape Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, no, oh, this is their logo. Balance. Yes, for the yeah. for the Canada Games. Yeah. Okay. And he added the lice. He did. Yeah. Yeah. So he took he took good care of you so that you didn't have long stretches of. I told float. him. He actually he came to me and said because he's heard me mutter about long floats. He said, "So how many stitches? How, how long can I go before right. we have to change?" So right. and I said five was my max. Okay. So it's not. 
entirely that way in order to get the shape he wanted, but it's as close as he could right. get. So this is Selkirk worsted. And what size needle are you, we talked about, is it, uh, it's a three, three, I think, three millimeters. Is it three or is it 3.5? Oh boy, in these lights, they're harder to see. Oh, I wanna say it's three. I think you said three the last time, yeah, if I'm not I'm mistaken. So it's quite dense. Yes. But the, the yarn is pretty elastic. So yeah. it's gonna be a nice warm mitten. And he nice wants warm them mitten. fitted. He may have to be working like a pen and a, a checkboard or right. a clipboard. I'm not sure okay. exactly what he'll be doing. It's so. really nice. I, yeah. I said this the last time. I love this color combo. Com Combination yeah. conversation. <laughs> this color combination, right? Maybe it is a color conversation. Yes, yeah, it is. yeah maybe. So that's oh. that project. Right. Then. And you noticed, people, oh. that she swatched for her mittens. I did swatch for my mittens. Well, I wanted to see how his chart worked. <laughs> right. That was part of it. Right. And what I did, oh, I should clarify that. So I'm really struggling, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I really struggle with when I'm going to knit in the round to make a swatch, I've taken some different advice on trying to do, do that, loops. how to yeah. do that best. This one, I literally just did it in the round and then cut, cut it. Yeah. A steak did it essentially, I guess. Yeah. Cut it out. I just cut it. There was no it's not. There. It's interesting to note that it's not unraveling. It's either. not unraveling. No. Nope. It's so you, and I did not reinforce that. If you just did some felting on oh, that, it fun. would probably just, yeah. Uh, yeah. It feel, feels really nice. <laughs> I love when she gets all like, her yarn is so good. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and it's nice. So lovely. Okay. So then I have started now for the cow. Okay. Well, oh. True uh -oh. confessions. I did not, I still haven't started my sweater. Well, don't get worried when you see how far I've gone. Okay. It looks kind of tiny. <laughs> it's rather. <laughs> so I had some, uh, some of you express some concern about my contrast. And you may be going to look at this here online and be like, Exactly. <laughs> we were right. Um, but I am, however, I am happy with it. Um, I am looking for very, very pale and um, what is the word? Low. Low, low contrast. contrast. So yeah. there is purple Mayflower in there in that gray. I know it's probably hard to see, um, yeah. but it is there and I can see it. And I am actually, I'm going to attempt to make this as a gift for someone else. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be mine. Yeah. Um, and they do not want high, high contrast. contrast at all. Okay. They actually really said they'd just take like a totally gray sweater. Yeah. But I don't want to make yeah. a completely gray sweater. Yeah. I think they'll love this if I can pull it off. Right. So I'm stuck right now because I'm trying this whole this knit across and then loop the yarn. Mm, okay. And yeah. it, I don't know. It's driving me crazy. So you have to swatch in the round. Or you don't Well, I'm to... knitting the whole thing in the round. Okay. So I should swatch in the round, yes. right? Yeah. I'm trying to be a good girl. Yeah. But it's it's driving me a little bonkers. Did you check Patty Lyon's book? I have not. I should. We should check Patty Lyon's book. Okay. Does she Because I wonder if she gives us, uh, maybe she, there's got to be some crafty. Some way. And it, I don't yeah. know if it's in in my reptile brain somewhere that she, it seems to me she does have something okay. about that. And I should definitely check so it out. So we're going to look. I and am going to go searching in general just for some more advice on improving my color work. I want to mm -hmm. read Kristen Drysdale's um, yeah. Nordic Knitting Primer because I'm positive she'll talk about it in there because yes. this is her pattern. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I just need to do some more homework, I think, before I really dig into right. this. Right. And uh, I, if, if I can find something in the in Patty Lyons, I'm pretty sure she's got something. She has to. She has. She's got things that, like smart things on oh. everything. So I will put a little ticker underneath where we're Sounds talking. Good. And uh, again, this is Mayflower and Pearl, Pearl. in Selkirk Worsted. Yeah. Mine is going to be Purple Coneflower and Aster. I think yes. Cur purple Which cone flower. Yes. Purple shade. Which I didn't even bring because I haven't even looked at it. So I will have to get on that yeah. because otherwise I'm not going to finish for my own cow. <laughs> so, so for those uh -oh. that haven't been seeing the previous episodes, we're doing a Kristen Drysdale Scandi Work Cal. It will end at the end of April. Okay. I have a group on uh, Ravelry. So there's two forms on Ravelry. One is Big Plans. Okay. And the other one is finished objects. Nice. So there's already a finished object or two there. 
What? Slippers. Because oh. she does a lot of slippers as Not well. Not that I can really say I'd have a pair of slippers then at this point, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I apologize in advance that if you've written a comment there and you haven't seen my face in there or my comments in there, as I haven't been in for a week and a half. Okay. <sighs> all these, all these, <laughs> I, I know it really just sounds like excuses, but I'm sure that everybody understands. Yes. Yes. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. So all I right. was also thinking about like this too. Um, so I've gone, well, as we get to it, the wallflower, I've kind of like been like, I'm buckling down on that. Right. So I'm thinking maybe this will be like a Christmas Eve or Christmas cast on kind of, I don't know, by okay. the firelight with right. some hot chocolate and, nice. and I don't know, cookies right. or something. And I have to say, I'm not sure that it will come out very well on, but it, this is so delicate and lovely. So the low contrast, you can see it when you're up close to it, yeah. but it is a very um, ethereal almost. Yeah. I really, really like it. Yeah. I do. So uh, yeah. I don't know if our producer can tell us if it showed up when it was close, but yeah, yeah. sort of. Anyway, it's very, very soft and delicate and lovely. And that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I've started just a little bit into the pattern. Yeah. I tried the bottom. And this is a swatch. swatch. This is a swatch. Right. Yeah. So how much of a swatch do I actually have to do to get it? <laughs> You want the, <laughs> to the get real? To read. Well, you should be doing four inches. Oh my gosh. At least. <laughs> and it's actually, um, this is, yeah, this is okay. It's a little oh, bit, you, you could that? even be a little bit longer, but a like long. wider. Oh, wider. I'm wider, wondering but... too, like, I don't think I'm leaving my back floats loose enough. So it's kind of pulling it um, in. You maybe, should be, you no, should be okay. Should be okay. Yeah. All right. So, but I can tell that your, uh, your floats have improved already. Good. Like I can, I I'm, can tell I'm that they working look, to look try pretty to good. Keep them talking yeah. over top of you. Sorry. And then when you cut this, it'll just open up and you'll be able to see. Okay. Okay. So I will keep going. I know some people are like, oh yeah, you know, you do a swatch. It only takes an hour. I have never had a swatch take me an hour. <laughs> Well, it takes color longer. Work. Color works. Yeah. It takes longer. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. Um, but a, it is worth it in the end. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. So I will persevere. <laughs> I will persevere. Okay. All right. I think Anything else all in the knitting, knitting. bag? Nope. No. That's it. I, there was something that I was, I thought of something while you were showing that and now I can't, and it seemed to me that it was important and now I can't remember it all. So I'm going to randomly, it'll pop in my mind randomly and I'm going to break in. Seems, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> That was perfect. <laughs> okay. That's it. It just popped into my mind randomly. Back on Arna and Carlos. Yes. You did a slideshow. Yes. Yes. So I'm either showing it right now. Okay. Okay. Or um, I'll show it in, in earlier or later or whatever. It's going to be in here somewhere. Somewhere. We yeah. do have so a slideshow. You've, so you've already seen it. It's been produced by Betsy. Oh. Um, <laughs> you've already seen it or you're seeing it now in a minute. Or you're going to see it later. <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> we're just keeping you on your toes. Yeah. Or maybe yep. we're keeping us on our toes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we do have just a little vignette of things yeah. that happened over the, over the course of the three days. Yeah. Compliments of Betsy. Oh. Yeah.
Wallflowers. So, okay. Um, you want me to show mine first. <laughs> Maybe you want to show yours first. All right. Before you get completely <laughs> wowed and then you see mine and you go, Just, ah. just because I have more done, not because it's yeah. any better. No. So um, I went into production mode, as I said. And, um, well, don't I, dump it. Oh, yeah, I know. I almost dumped it. So I have all my little things in here. And I brought this because this is what I'm... I like that combination. Yes. That's <laughs> okay. what I've been... This is... I've been doing all of this to get to that. To that. Yes. Okay. So right now, I've got these green pieces. Yeah. So again, not sure. Not sure. And Just of these two colors together? No, which, which ones those, are you they sure look about? great together, but yeah. I'm not sure in my blanket how it's going oh, to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I did um, finish all of the ones that I need for that. So all of these, um, what are these ones called? Pebbles? Pebbles. Pebbles. Yes. So all the pebbles are done, and I've started joining them in. So you can just see on the front just those two. So there's, um, yeah, so there's this one. And then there's the dark with the light there, and that's going to go all the way around. Should we show and them then the that creates um, that creates the frame for the those big flowers are coming now. Yes. So and so that's uh, yeah. So <laughs> it gets a little complicated to hold up. So it goes like this, and this is going to be a huge flower in in Feels here. Good. Yeah. So these just go all the way around like this. So I purposely did, there's these little triangle, like triangle shapes, and then there's these spiky shapes. Yeah. So there'll be a spiky shape uh, over here again. <laughs> and um, so that's, that's, where, that's where I am. And they go in pretty quick. Yes. But what I'm most excited about is this, I've been just dying to get to this color, which is the dark purple, which is in my dark border or whatever right. it's not the darkest color but um this is the color that i was really after okay to, Does it to have see a name? yeah it's uh bilberry bilberry and um the color that's going around these uh the lighter ones right now is called amethyst yeah. and so these two together is the combination that i really yeah was striving for so i think that there's quite a lot of this oh, and i'm just getting to it now so what can you remember what B4 these are and B5. B4 and B5. Yeah. Okay. There's going to be your whole next section. A lot of the background is based on B4, B4 and, and B5. B5. Yeah. And then it goes dark yes. to, to almost black. Yes. So um, it'll be, be, then it goes reminiscent of the center, this center, here. the dark Start center. Right yeah. yeah. So what I'm hoping is that um, these, the purples are really what's going to stand out and pop because that's what I really wanted to see. It's hard to know. It really is yeah. hard to know for sure. Yeah. Um, and I can't say because I'm doing mine opposite. Yours moves right. from dark in the very center to dark on the very outside. Mine is light to very light on the outside. So I don't know what's going to pop yeah. on yours. We're going to see. Versus, yeah, that's that's see. part of the fun of it. Yeah. Because it just keeps growing. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's, uh, so that's that. And I, there's, I mean, these little, this little... Uh, these pebbles are, there's only 30 of them. Yes, and so, they're fairly quick to get in. And you yeah, mix they around do. with these really large flowers. It takes a while to make them. Right. But once they're in, you feel like you've, you've expanded big, your size okay. quite a bit. Perfect. But it, I will say, yeah, those those big flowers do take some time. I dropped one too. We'll get oh, it. We can get it later. If okay, you want I'll get it. Now. Okay. So Clyde loves this blanket. So every t Clyde's our barn cat yeah. that's in the house. And every time I set the blanket down, wherever I set it down, she's on it. She's on it. Well, she... I have a cute little photo that we'll post right here to show you our kitty who got to see it for the first time and also was quite enthralled. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she so gave for... me the perfect little picture. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. So let's see this okay, baby. So I have like this weekend, if I was not at a Christmas festival or I was not eating i was <laughs> i was doing this okay i was pretty i'm determined because it is coming so oh, close oh my goodness so i Betsy. have a photo that we posted so you can see the whole thing but i have just decided oh wow to done so wow as best as i can show you we're, can you even hear us back here <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
So, and Kim would like to see the front, I think. I'll show yeah. it to her after. Okay. So as you can see, her center, we might have to lift it up, had the dark center here. So mine has the light, and now this whole outside frame is moving into the lightest colors. Okay. So I am down to, this is actually the very corner of the blanket minus um, a few rounds that we do all the way around just solid. Okay, yeah, that's okay. no, that'll be fun. That, okay, that round will be fun. Um, so I've been putting in all these little things and these actually go right, right quick. <laughs> <laughs> they go quite quickly. Right. Um, so I'm down to on this end here that we're looking at, which is a completed end, I have to make these little half hexes. Oh, that will okay. then make this all straight. level. So okay. we'll have it'll be all straight around the edge. Okay. But you have to make those and insert them at the same time, or you would have useless ends okay. or pointless ends. So I'm going to do those as I go. Okay. So I have all the other pieces made except for those little half hexes, right. which I'll make as I go in the, in the space itself. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the border. So and you're really almost done. I really done. am. Yeah. So I you had Christmas, and I mean it. You don't have any of the any pieces. Nothing. To make. Nope. No loose pieces. Nope. Holy smokes. Okay. Bunch of ends to tie in on the edge here, but even the center. I've I'm done sure it looks the, beautiful. The ends. It's it's a good size, eh? Yeah. It's a. It'll be a nice, cozy lap size. Um, yeah. Like, even if I was sitting on the couch beside my husband, I might share. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Can yeah. fit under. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Just like that. So yeah. it's coming along really good. I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you could kind of compare to see where your colors are going to be, but I don't think it'll work because we went opposite. Yes, it won't really exactly. tell you yeah. what's actually, because for me, I'm getting a lot of this bright pink, which I'm excited about. I was really nervous about these yellowy green colors, but they just fade in there yeah. so nicely. Yeah, nice. yeah. They yeah. don't actually stand out yeah. too frightening. So that's actually where I am now, right? You so are adding these I'm guys. adding these. Yeah. So when I finish these um yeah, these things that so it's setting my blanket right on the microphone. Oh, so it, it, what you see here is that everything is the opposite because mine are the light ones in here and the dark ones here. So it really is the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so this okay. will be your your next one yeah. that comes. Okay. So you can Great. kind of get a hint of like whatever these colors are in here. Yeah, that's purple what it'll be. Yeah. Is it so your big flowers will be out of your purple? Uh I don't know. I think I... Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to know. know. It's hard to know. We'll, well find out. You, let's put it this way. They will be out of my purple. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Actually I should um I did do some changes as well. Mm -hmm. Um and I did run into a few moments of like, oh, oops. Now I'm going to have to make some other changes because I ran out of yarn. And I get stubborn with that. And I'm like, mm -mm, I'm not getting more yarn. We're just going to like change right. up where we use it. So I did do it, but I can't even tell you anymore exactly where I did that. And I will confess, uh, these are all in the wrong spot. Because they are? I started, I put them, I was three quarters of the way in and I went, oh, I was supposed to put other ones in. Oh. So I looked at what they were and I said, I don't care. They're the same color. Right. They're not the same so these Motif. and these are reversed. These and these are reversed. But you're... Nobody will no, know. No, no, no. Nobody no. will know. Yeah. So I think uh, looking... I'm going to take a closer look at yours. And I'm going to just make sure... Because maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my dark purples here and then do a different color on the outside. Yeah, like you have to, I know one thing is going to lead to another. It's... I think it's the background colors when you start messing with those that things get more complicated because those are the ones that actually touch, right? Yeah, so that is so, the background colors I'm talking about. These are my, those purples okay. are my background well, we can, colors. We'll, we'll look at it together and, and have yeah. a look and see what, I, I still think like you have to make the blanket you want, Yeah, right? exactly. So, yeah. I definitely want it to show purple. Lots of purples. But, yeah, but then again, the background colors are here, so then that is going to be a lot as well. The only thing is, is that I don't want this to be um, peach. Okay. So we'll have to look so, and see what the pattern's telling you and then yeah, adjust it from there. That's right, because I don't want I don't want the prominent color to be the, the peach. 
And I can't even tell you because that's where I changed. Yeah. Because I changed mine to green here to make it look more like a lily pad. So right. this is not what pattern calls Anyway, for. we'll have to sit. When I get to the next yeah. step, you and I will sit together. And mm. since you know how it's going to kind of unfold. You can pull mine out and you'll see where. Yeah. Okay, if it, if it was here, then it's going to be here. Right. Right. That kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Great. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. So you're on track. I am on track. Yes. Yeah. So, and... Uh, Cinnamon loves it. Yeah, it's a really cute little picture. I couldn't believe yeah. how perfect she was for it. That's so. good. Okay, so I guess that's what is it? That's it. That's, it. that's yeah. a wrap. <laughs> that's right. That's so right. thanks for joining us. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah. So we've got a couple busy weeks yeah. coming up, and um, my mom's coming to visit. Oh. Yeah. So my mom's coming. I'm going to get her on Sunday. Okay. And she's coming. Nice. So she's going to join us in the wood tent. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to be fancy. Yeah. But we have heat now. So oh, yes. I yeah. should say, because I think, I can't remember, did I have tea, heat at the last recording? Um, they were coming. It was coming and, and it I may had, have gone in. Yes, I sure. had. we got it on a Thursday. Okay. So that means that when we recorded, I didn't have it. But by the time it aired, right, we, we did. did have it. So it's working wonderfully. Nice. So it's very nice to have heat. Good. With the insulation. With the, yeah. so that's, that's a key combination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so things are uh, things are warm in the house. In fact, we still were a little bit, you know, unsure and kept the double wool blankets on the bed. But finally, this morning, we said, okay, <laughs> it's safe now. We can get enough rid of it. We can get rid of the wool blankets. Oh, good. So that's it. Okay, right. so we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> All right, so that was a little bit of a long session. We talked about a lot of things, and uh, Betsy's been really busy. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, a little bit of a slacker, but I think everybody understands why. And I'm not apologizing for not being, uh, not have knitting. A lot of people are letting me off the hook and uh, I'm happy to be let off the hook this week because uh, it was really hectic and busy and uh, very exciting but uh, it's good to kind of be back to back to normal now um, I would like to at this point remind everybody about the Scandi Works Cal so I talked about it in the Betsy uh, segment so just to recap uh, we're doing a knit along with all you can knit along and join the uh, Cal with any Kristen Drysdale Scandi Works pattern and you can knit it in any kind of yarn you want I'm doing the Maya sweater out of the Nordic Knitting Primer and uh, when I finally get it started which I'm hoping probably realistically it's might not even be before the next podcast I'm not sure because I really want to finish some of these projects but um, we do take some time off at Christmas time and I might just I might just start it then when I have a few days off and have some time to really sit and do the swatch and and do that but I do as I mentioned in the piece with Betsy I do have the groups going on Ravelry so I um, invite all of you to post your your things your comments and uh, your works in progress or your finished objects in that uh, in that group on Ravelry I did manage to get a list of five done this week so we are going to talk about that and since it's December 9th and you still have enough time I think to knit a Christmas stocking I took a look at Christmas stockings that are featured on Ravelry and uh, I found five great patterns for uh, knitting Christmas stockings now I when I say Christmas stocking I'm thinking of something that you hang and hope that you get candy and stuff on, on uh, for Christmas morning um, people have made some comments on some of these patterns that can you wear these stockings some of them you can but obviously they're big so I would say if you're gonna wear them they're they're more like house slippers kind of thing but for me when I was looking at the stockings it's something to be hung up uh, and opened on Christmas morning then you don't have to make two you can just make one and uh, so that's that's what I'm I'm looking at so the first one in the list of five is the top down Christmas stocking by Yuki Knits and uh, the pattern is $15 US but you have 24 charts in that pattern so she has a wide variety of charts 
um, that are that are in the pattern so you have lots of combinations that you can make and she even tells you on Ravelry that you can actually make 512 combinations of different socks so if you want to do socks for a family or a series of socks then this may be the only pattern that you need um, as the title says it's a top-down sock and just to um, be clear with the the uh, list of five as I've said before when I first started this segment I always make sure that uh, the, there's lots of positive comments there's projects that have been done and that the pattern is highly ranked or rated on the diff on the um, uh, clarity and uh, that the overall rating is high um, some of the socks I'm going to show are a little bit more difficult uh, because of the, te the techniques or the way that they're written but I'm going to show them anyway because there were some really fantastic ones so like I said the first one is the top down Christmas stockings by Yuki Knits and um, one final thing about this you can like I said 512 different combinations of socks so you can knit one for your whole block and for everybody in your block and uh, the other thing is is that they can be lined with fabric so they tell you how to line it with fabric so if you're really using it as a Christmas stocking you can put fabric inside and it um, the pattern is for worsted weight yarn so you can use uh, wor Selkirk worsted or another worsted uh, weight yarn the Norwegian wool would be great in Rowan as well the second uh, stocking on the list of five is called, just called Basic Christmas Stocking and it's a design by Church Mouse. It's $8 US on Ravelry and the pattern comes in three sizes. So I think the smallest one is Wee and the, I can't remember what the middle one is called and then I think it's Jolly Giant or something like that on the, on the third uh, side. So as you can see from the picture, this is like a perfectly plain stocking, not a lot of color work and everything. Um, the only thing that is a, I want to tell you is that there is no chart for the duplicate stitch. So when the names and things like that are on the top of the stocking, you have to be able to figure that out yourself. But if you want to go really old school and just have a perfectly plain Christmas stocking um, that you can add a little bit of embellish embellishment to if you want. I thought that this was a really good pattern for that and a lot of people have knit this stocking and uh, but that was the one comment that I saw is that they they would have expected that there would at least be a chart for uh, duplicate stitch to put the names on the top of the sock. Um, so just keep that in mind you'd have to be able to come up with that yourself. The third one is called the Holly Christmas Stocking and this is designed by Annie's Woolen and the individual pattern is seven dollars US and I should say that seven dollars US comes out to be about nine fifty or ten dollars Canadian the dollar is going up and down like crazy so I'm not quite sure what it is but it is in US dollars but for $24.50 US, you can buy 15 patterns and they're all different designs of stockings. All this very traditional um, kind of Nordic looking uh, designs and they even have a pair of stock or a stocking that you can make that's felted. So I think that that's pretty cool. And if you think that you might want to knit a lot of different stockings, I think it's a pretty good deal for $24.50 US because they're all beautiful. I went through the the scroll through the the um, all of the patterns in the in the ebook, and uh, they're just lovely, intricate heirloom. I would say heirloom stockings. So you might want to check that one out. So again, the one I liked the best is the Holly Christmas stocking. But like I said, there's a whole series of beautiful ones in that pattern. The uh, fourth one on the list stocking on the list is called the spindle knitters stocking and it's by Kristen Hall designs it's a free pattern and it's uh, knit in an errand weight so this would actually be a pretty fast um, pattern to do except that it's for ambitious knitters so the designs are complex and you can see that um, you can see that in the picture so I would say if you're uh, not a beginner but and an ambitious uh, knitter that um, you can make these stockings and they're really um, intricate and lovely 
Uh, the only thing again is that there, um, the pattern for the border, the edge, you have to put your own pattern in there. So again, you need to have a little bit of knowledge about how to add a pattern to, to knitting. Um, and right in the in the description, she says that you can you can just use a stitch uh, dictionary to find the pattern that pattern that you do along the top edge. So you do need to do a little extra work with these to um, complete them. But I just really like the whimsical look of the stockings, and it's in Aran weight, so there, it'll be uh, relatively quick because the yarn, yarn is not too fine. And we can't forget about some other family members. And there, so number five is actually called Dog Paws, and there's a cat version as well. So Dog Paws and Cat Paws. And these socks are made or designed by Michelle Wilcox. They're also a free pattern. And I just think they're really fun to have your little cat have a, have a stocking or your dog. And uh, as you can see from the picture, they look like the animal's paws. paws. I think you have plenty of time to knit those as well. They're fairly uh, straightforward and simple. So that's the list of five Christmas stockings. Um, you're gonna have to get going if you wanna knit some of the more intricate ones, but I think it's totally doable if you're not me. <laughs> I can't hardly finish anything, but uh, there's some uh, last minute ideas for Christmas stockings. Um, and most of them are in, in worsted weight, except for uh, the one that uh, was the, which one was it? Uh, the spindle knitters stocking is in Aran weight. So uh, the rest of them are in worsted weight yarns. All right. So we're going right to the shop update and I have kind of a gift giving theme for the shop update today. So our friend Scott from Fox Mountain Spindles has been developing some new products. So I'm really happy to show you the double yarn buddy. So people know uh, the Yarn Buddy. He's, we've sold a lot of Yarn Buddies, the single ones, but he's had requests from people that wanted one to hold two yarns for color work. So Scott has made the double Yarn Buddy. So for those that don't know how it works, <clears throat> you have to have a, a, a ball of yarn that has a, a hole in the center and you just put your yarn on here and then you put this on top to hold your yarn down. And I mean, I can show you the action on these, uh, these like Lazy Susans is so smooth and wonderful. Um, the Yarn Buddy helps, helps you keep your tension even as well. So now we have these beautiful double yarn buddies. So the three things from uh, Fox Mountain Spindles that we have that are sort of kind of have yarn buddies with them. So the Swift that Scott makes also comes with attachments that you can turn it into a single yarn buddy. Buddy, So you have that, show a picture of it here. Then you have the single yarn buddy by itself. If you want to purchase that, you can just get, and it looks exactly like this, except there's only one, one of them. You can purchase that. And now we have the double yarn buddy. So you have those three things to help you handle your, your yarn. Then um, Scott also did a darning mushroom. So here is the darning mushroom. And I've talked about Scott's stuff a lot on the podcast, but it's just so beautiful. He works mostly in maple, but sometimes he uses other woods as well. But um, these are all made out of uh, solid maple. They're gorgeous. Um, nice and heavy you've got a good uh, handle here and there is a groove around the edge of it so that you can put an elastic band so just for people that aren't familiar i have a sock that doesn't have a hole in it but you can see how it works you um, put it into the area that you need to darn and then you can just put a tie a string or put an elastic band on where that ridge is and that holds your socks steady while you do your do your darning. So we have those in the shop. So if you want to purchase that, you can order that online as well. So that's the darning mushroom. 
And um, another thing that, and I'll put a link in the show notes, but it'll go to all of Scott's things. So Scott also makes drop spindles. And of course, we're big fans of his Nostapins. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we have those in stock as well. So we have everything that we carry uh, in stock. The next thing that I want to show, especially maybe for gift giving or gift giving to yourself, is we did order more of these gorgeous yarn bowls by Elise Dufour. Uh, so Elise is a friend of mine. Um, I've known her for many, many years. We worked together uh, when we worked uh, at L'Oreal. And um, so she is now doing these beautiful ceramics. She follows the wabi-sabi um, kind of uh, aesthetic, meaning that, you know, perfectly imperfect. And uh, the yarn bowls are just gorgeous. They're quite different because they're, they're shallow, but I have tested them and they absolutely work. So um, you don't need to worry. Your yarn doesn't pop out while you're using it. It goes uh, through the, the hole just like a regular uh, um, yarn bowl but uh, it stays in there because like I said, I tested it to make sure that it's still, it's beautiful, but if it was beautiful and didn't work, then that wouldn't have been good, but uh, it does work. So this would make a really nice gift for a knitter, very special. Um, so maybe put it on your list if you're interested in that. It's, it's really art. It's art that functions as a tool. So that's the, uh, um, the yarn bowl. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is we do have um, the, uh, oh, I have a sample. Um, so we have the CNIT. We started carrying some of the CNIT products, which are made by Kinky Emma Berry. And one of the things that we carry now is these ornament kits. So I've talked about them before. Um, you have a... Uh, stocking to knit a small tiny stocking and you have everything that you need in the kit including the needles and everything and I'm just going to show you how it turns out because our um, friend of the shop Joanne uh, one of our customers actually knit up one of the kits so you have this little sock blocker and you knit the little sock and inside the kit you have everything that you need so you have the the needles to uh, the double pointed needles to do the knitting you have the little ball of yarn and there is also two little pins in there because you have enough yarn in that little tiny ball to also do a little charm which is a ball of yarn with knitting needles stuck in it and you have the blocker uh, that I showed so that you can um, hang up your stocking so we have the kit in the stocking, a knitted stocking, and we also have the kit for a knitted mitten as well. So these two, these two kits. So it's a little bit of a conundrum, I guess. You're, you're, um, it's a gift. You can give it as a gift, but then the knitter has to knit an ornament, <laughs> or you can buy them for yourself and then knit the ornament for your for your tree. So we have a couple of these left in stock. And um, I did uh, also um, purchase the C-Knit uh, interchangeable needles. So these are bamboo needles and this is a small kit. So I did purchase the small kit and I put all the details below in the title with the size of the needle. Um, these kits uh, come sealed so I won't, uh, I won't open it here but I will um, show a picture of it open. So you have the um, four sets of needles and three cords and the two stoppers. And again, it's a small set, uh, five inch needles and um, with the size of uh, the needles are listed below on the ticker. So we have these in stock. Okay, I just love their packaging. It's like all folded materials, like folded uh, paper, origami-ish like. So uh, I'm really, really loving these. We did get the darning needles back in stock for CNET as well. We sold out of those immediately the last time I showed them on the podcast. So we do have those back in stock too. And um, 
The next thing that I'm going to show is another really good gift for knitters. So you can put that on your list or uh, buy it for a knitter. And that is the Coco Knits uh, Knitters Block Set. So the Coco Knits, we've had this in stock for quite a long time. But the it has these uh, um, 18 of these pads. I think it's 18 yeah 18 and they have like a little bit of a um like a uh, what's it like a, almost like a little turfy thing on the top of them so that actually holds your your uh the things that you're blocking just up slightly so that they dry faster and also if you don't need to do a hard block and you don't want to um put you don't think that you need to pin it um, it's just sticky enough that it holds the the sweater or the shawl or whatever in in place uh, so that um, you may not need to need to pin and um, the material there is a t-pins a box of t-pins comes with the with the kit so you have the full size box of t-pins and um, if you do need to pin the uh, the material that these uh, squares are made out of is actually self-healing so you can pin all you want and then it closes over and you don't have a lot of holes in your thing you also have a blocking cloth so this cloth comes with the kit and the squares are one inch square so you don't need you just spread that over the uh, the blocking uh, mats and if you need to measure you can measure right with the cloth and the pins just go through that as well so it's pretty uh, you have everything that you need to have a perfect uh, block on your sweater so that's the coco knit knitters block we have that on our site we have those in stock and um we just uh we just kind of mentioned it briefly but uh when arna and carlos were here they had a glove that they had purchased at, or two gloves that they had purchased at the museum in selbu that showed the traditional selbu knitting so um, arne and carlos talked about the selbu mitten book and uh, we have this still in stock as well and if you've watched me before, like recently, then you know that I uh, read this book and they started talking about the yarn that they used. And we had uh, a big batch of yarn or wool, I should say, that didn't really fit the specs of what we do normally with our Selkirk Worsted and our Erin. But it was a lovely wool that I wanted to try to develop a yarn for. And I was just waiting to come up with an idea for the yarn. And when I read this book, I figured that I had found the type of yarn that I wanted to do with that wool. So I made the yarn and by just looking at what the, how they described the, the yarn and the wool in this book. But I had no idea if I was even close to what would be acceptable to do the salvo mittens because I was interpreting what they read. So Arna and Carlos started talking about this book during one of their classes because they had gloves that were made in this style. And I happened to bring our Wild Winds 2-ply and which is the yarn that I made hoping that people would be able to use this yarn to knit uh, these mittens. And we got the stamp of approval from Arna. So Arna and uh, Carlos had looked at the yarn and uh, said that, yes, it would be good. And um, Arna mentioned that the yarn, this weight of yarn was actually the finer side of the yarn that they would have used for those designs. So he said that the, um, the older designs had used very fine yarn because they were very intricate. So, um, and he said that this was, this was like kind of in, within the specs of the yarn that they would have used. So if you haven't seen this before, we only make three colors. There's natural white. Um, the flock of sheep that we get this yarn uh, from has a little bit of black, or a few black sheep, but uh, we also have black sheep. So we've mixed a, a little bit of natural black with the white to get the gray. And then we also have um, a black. So the black, we don't have enough black fleeces to make this 100% undyed. But what we did is we mix the 
because natural black in sheep is actually like a really really dark chocolate brown so we we blend it uh, some dyed wool with natural black wool and we've come up with the with the black in the wild winds um, so people have been searching for this on the website and maybe not finding it but wild winds is all one word so when you do our search engine is a little bit picky so when you search for wild winds it's just it's wild winds all one word and uh, it's a two ply yarn uh, 200 yards for 50 grams and uh, it is suitable for the fine um, the fine uh, mittens and gloves in in the book so you can check that out we're back in stock we had to make a few batches so we have we have it in stock now and speaking of i forgot because it was at the bottom of my of my uh <laughs> bottom of my pile i just think that this is funny uh, i guess i'm gonna have to write him and tell him he forgot it but uh, when we were cleaning up the room after the layered color work uh, class, we found this that was left behind. This is Arnie's sample that he was using to teach the class. So I don't know, I think I'm gonna maybe put it in one of those box frames and this is the Arnie sample. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got his uh, his needles and everything in here and I was looking at his knitting he's re he is really good he's the real deal that's for sure anyway I just I kept that and I threw it on the table there and and saw it so my little memento I'll just have to keep it like that I can't finish it it has to be his his work so that was a little thing aside so now I have two things that um, are pretty special that are happening so the first one is um, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but we had um, a batch of wool that we weren't able to spin here because um, it was a little bit too short for our machines to spin. So we spent, sent that wool up to the McCausland's mill that's at the other end of the island and they were able to spin it for us. They have different types of machines than we do and they create uh, quite a, a different yarn. It's a rustic yarn for sure but it is excellent, has excellent durability, and um, it's really good for, like I often sell that yarn to people that want, we don't list it online, so you can't get it, buy it in our shop because we just make it as we dye it in different colors and everything, so I can't really list it on the shop. But I sell it a lot to people that are work, looking for socks, like to make work socks, because it's hard wearing, um, like I said, pretty rustic, but it does soften up when you uh, when you wash it and block it. Um, but we have quite a lot of it because we had this huge batch of wool that we sent up there. And we just dye it, like do a batch every now and then and put it in the store. We don't really pay attention to um, like stocking certain colors. We just, they're all colors that we have here in the store, but we just do what we want when we do it. So Janet, who works with us, actually has a small knitting machine at home and it's the hand kind that you do this. So she asked if we would dye some of the wool for her in specific colors because she wanted to try to come up with a design of a sweater um, that's called the Fleece and Harmony Farm Sweater. So she's been working on this project for a little while and we did the dyeing for her and she's came back with some sweaters and they're absolutely gorgeous. So we have enough that we can talk about them here and if you want to purchase them then uh, we will be listing them on the website. So if you think you want to purchase one of these sweaters, listen to the next explanation that I'm going to give very carefully because I want you to be able to get the right size. So here is a sweater. This one is in um, Fiddlehead is the name of the color. So it's a green with pops of uh, brown and gold. So this is it. this and the sizing are, is a range of sizes. So there's small and medium, medium and large, large and extra large. So um, really, really basic. It's a raglan sleeve. So you have a raglan sleeve. There is no ribbing on these sweaters. The ends are just uh, the rolled, uh, the rolled um, edges on the top, bottom, and the neck. And the idea was that Janet wanted to create a sweater that you could actually wear outside and do work in. 
so it's not a it's not a fancy sweater although ken has one and he wears it out all the time out out like around when we're doing errands or out to dinner and uh, this is what it looks like so a couple things about these sweaters first of all we really like them in variegated yarns but you can't alternate the skeins when you're doing it so when you're doing the knitting so there is uh there can be a little bit of pooling the other thing is is that i measured all of the sweaters because they're handmade and we did a few different sizing variations so these are the first batch we had to um, they do all have a little bit of a different sizing so i'm going to tell you how i measured and i've put the measurements on the uh, on the website so you in the description of the sweater so you'll be able to know exactly what you're getting so they're a raglan sleeve. They're meant to be roomy, so there's no shaping really like on the waist or anything. It's just plain, straight. And I've measured, so for the sleeve length, uh, for the sleeve length, I have measured from the top of the shoulder. So I've measured from the top of the shoulder like this down to the cuff. So if you want to know if your sleeve is going to fit, that's how you have to measure. And uh, when you're measuring for sleeve length, you always want to bend your elbow a little bit so to make sure that you had room. So I've measured from the top bone of the shoulder down to the cuff, and that's the measurement where it says sleeve. The chest measurement is pretty self-explanatory. It's across the chest and that's the finished the finished measurement of the sweater. And they're meant to be worn with ease positive ease because they're to be able to be moving around and then I measured the length goes from the just below the neck so where your it's meant to be where your um, collarbone would be down to the bottom and they are there's a couple different lengths there as well so check those measurements out and check them out either on a sweater that you love or uh, on yourself so that you know what you're getting and we did this really little cool thing that I want to show you as well is that our little logo is on there. So every sweater has this little square, orange square, which is uh, the color of our, uh, of our logo on it. So that's, uh, we thought that that was a little bit cool. So we have a couple different colors. This is a test. Um, and we'll see if you, we wanted to see if you were, if you like them. So they're handmade, but on a hand worked machine, but all of the sewing and uh, the seaming is done by hand. Janet did them and she is a meticulous uh, finisher of her knits. So they, they just are really, really well put together and they're pretty cool. Ken's been wearing his, the very first prototype that we made. He's, it's one of his go-to sweaters. He loves it. So we have a couple different sizes. Um, we, uh, we took pictures of everybody in the different sizes. So you'll be seeing that here somewhere as we're, as we're talking about it. And the colors are all different. And like I said, I'm gonna take a picture of the front and the back of the sweater so that you can see exactly how the colors play out uh, over, the, over the sweater. And um, I hope that you like them. So this is, a, like I said, a test. Uh, we're gonna see if there's demand for these sweaters. So again, it's our fleeces that went to McCausland's Woolen Mill to be spun in their mill. We brought them back. We dyed them with our regular dyeing method that we do. So all of the wool was hand dyed. We gave the dyed wool to Janet and Janet used her hand knitting machine to knit the sweater and then hand pieced them together and all the seams are done um, individually by hand. So that's uh, a project. So if you want one, I have uh, seven sweaters and that's all of different sizes. So I'll list all of them. And uh, you've, by now you've seen pictures of them all. So uh, you know what the selection is and that's it. And then the next big news is that, uh, so that was yarn that we sent up to McCausland's quite a long time ago. It was like two years ago, the clip was done and we sent the wool up uh, quite a while ago. Last, um, the last time we sheared, we actually kept the clip and we sent it up to McCausland's as well. And I think we talked about it, uh, gave hints of what we might do. So we're actually getting blankets made again. So 
The issue is, is that McCausland's mill has gone crazy because they're really, really busy. So the blankets are a little bit late. I was hoping to have them well before Christmas to be able to show them. But uh, I'm recording this on Tuesday. So tomorrow I'm going to get a uh, partial shipment of blankets. Um, I don't know exactly what colors are coming until they get here. So I will be putting some blankets in the shop. Um, but you're not going to have the full selection of colors right away. Then um, I will get a second shipment uh, later in the week next week. And as those come in, I will list them. And then uh, the week after that, I, I think I'm getting a few more. A uh, few more. So by um, Wednesday of next week, I should have most of my order. Um, there could be there could be uh, like a delay again or whatever because they're really, really swamped there. So I think what I'll do is I'm telling you all about it. So I, you'll have a, you'll be able to go on the website and check to see if we have it, but I will um, send out a special newsletter. So for people that don't know, uh, if you're not a newsletter subscriber, we send out a newsletter every Friday. I was late last week. It went out on Sunday morning, but we send out a newsletter every Friday. It's only the only time we, we send out a newsletter um, unless there's something really exciting and really special that's happened in the shop, then I may send out an additional newsletter and the um, people that are subscribed to the newsletter can, can uh, there's always a link to, some, to buy something if, they're, if I'm making an announcement. So I will um, do special editions of the newsletter with the link to the blankets if they're not um, available when I do my regular newsletter. So if, cause I know people have been waiting for them and I'm sorry, this is a little bit chaotic the way that we're doing it, but there's not, um, I do want to offer them to people so that they might have a chance of getting them before Christmas in case they want to give them as gifts. This year we're getting some of the same colors that we had when we did our first batch, but we are, um, uh, so you, there's going to be some with checkerboard patterns and some in tweed, what they call their tweed striped. And I will have queen size blankets and throws. I'm not doing the lap blankets this time because they didn't sell quite as quickly as the other, the other ones, but I have more inventory than what I had in previous uh, versions of the blankets. And I, the only thing I can say is that stay tuned. You can check back on the website. Um, starting Friday or Saturday uh, to see what's available, but we will be getting more the next week as well. So I would say you're pretty safe. Uh, if you don't see exactly what you want on Friday or Saturday, then there will be another batch go on the website uh, later in the week. And I will send a newsletter about that when, when they're going to be uh, put up on the website. We expect that they'll go pretty quick. The last time we had them, uh, they went really, really quickly, but I want to try to be fair to everybody. So I'm giving you warning that that's going to happen. And um, I can't reserve any because I don't know exactly what colors I'm getting when I'm getting them. So I can't, I can't reserve it. You're just, it's just going to have to be first come first serve, but I will let you know through the newsletter. Um, or you can check the website uh, uh, because they will be listed there. Everybody can access the listing, but um, I just, I can't, I can't reserve them. So these blankets will be our wool, just to be clear, our wool. And uh, they're labeled as Fleece and Harmony spun by McCausland blankets. So they will have our labels uh, on them as well. So um, I hope you're excited about that. We're really excited. Uh, they were really, really nice the last time we had them. So we're very excited about getting them back in stock. And I think that's it. That's it. There's a, that was quite a lot. <laughs> so we're going to go to the harmony part. And Ken found a great subject this time. So I'm calling the harmony part the gaggle of geese because all of the Canadian geese are on their move. They're moving to their um, winter, wherever they go in the winter. I'm not quite sure where, how far south they go, but they're flying overhead all the time. And Ken caught this beautiful video of them all landing on a pond um, 
on his way, he was going to pick up wool from the farm that we buy our, some of our wool from. And uh, he came across this flock of uh, geese landing on this beautiful still pond. Um, so I'll put the music behind that. And I hope that you enjoy that peaceful, calm setting in nature. And with that, I'm wishing you a great two weeks. We'll see you back here in two weeks, I hope. And uh, so what would that be? It's going to be 14 days. So that's going to be a, like at the very end. What is it? The 23rd of December. So getting pretty close to Christmas at that point. And we'll see you, uh, we'll see you uh, then on the 23rd, I hope. And enjoy the harmony part. Have a great two weeks with peace and joy in your crafting. Bye.